Let's take a look at the markets now uh, on the east of the continent in Kenya and looking at the, the Kenyan exchange there. The NEC 20 was down 0.6% on uh, Friday to 44.77. Uh, the shares really to a, th a three week low there on Friday. Uh, one of those that was down was Kenya Power, 1.1% down to 17.55 shillings. Uh, and uh, they're waiting a review of prices. So this is an interesting company where it is held on the stock exchange but is, has an effective monopoly. And of course, administered prices there do affect its uh, returns to shareholders. If we're looking at the shilling, uh, they're steadied by a slowdown in importers' demand and also uh, investment uh, behavior influenced there by the uh, elections coming up and uh, perceptions of uh, the need to stabilize, to support uh, the peace process uh, such as it is in uh, Kenya. Although there has been general optimism about how that election will uh, tie up. So let's go now to our detailed market update with Anthony Kimani, who is research analyst at Genghis Capital. Good morning, Anthony. Uh, just looking at some of those shares there, I mentioned Kenya Power, uh, under selling pressure, do down by 1.13% there. And uh, it's an interesting company because it is an effective monopoly, but I its revenue, it can't set its own prices. And now uh, I think investors waiting for to see w what the administered price increase will be. Yes, that's true. We saw Kenya Power last week announce that it will have to reduce, it will have to increase some of its revenues uh, by raising prices to meet the costs that they are currently encountering as they try to expand their electricity network. Uh, but we are not so optimistic about it because, as you know, this is an election year and it's very hard for the regulator to go to the market and raise prices at a time where people are trying to sort of have a favorable view by uh, by the public in uh, in, term, in in ter in a political sense that is uh, they are expecting to raise their revenues by 21 per uh, uh, sorry their costs by 21% and 9% uh, two months later so we are we are sort of sitting back and waiting to see how that will whether that will materialize but yes you've mentioned that they are monopoly and if push comes to shove they'll definitely be allowed to increase prices of course the danger Anthony and we've seen it in South Africa is that uh, if tariffs are kept low for two reasons I think in South Africa certainly the one was to encourage investment by big companies which could count on uh, cheap electricity or relatively cheap electricity and of course the other one is political in the sense that no one wants to pay higher prices the danger is that you keep the tariffs too low for too long and then when you really need to get an increase it's too big an increase that can be absorbed by the economy Yes, that is true. That the same thing I can say is also happening in Uganda. But I guess it's sort of walking a tight line here. On the one hand, you have these power companies like Kenjin, who are sort of compensated, or, that they, or the return on equity that they require on some of their projects, sort of demand that they have to raise their prices so that they can get a return on the capital that they are putting into some of in all of this investment so it's a sort of catch-22 situation in that regard in that you want to encourage people to also invest in the power sector by are giving them attractive returns and you also want people in the manufacturing sector to benefit from the cheap prices so that's where I'd say the regulator is forced to walk a thin line Right, and let's move on to the banking sector. And I found the discussions we've had recently on the banking sector fascinating, particularly the tie-up with the telecom sector where there are great synergies there. Now, we also talked about the importance of dividends to Kenyan investors. But of course, the banks are retaining more income than they have in the past to get above the minimum levels of, of capital ratios and so on. Of course, that's not pop, uh, popular with investors, but presumably they understand the reason. Yes, that is true. Uh, what we are seeing with banks is they are sort of deciding to retain a lot of their dividends as they try to uh, sort of exp uh, expand their businesses in, in, on a software front. Uh, in the terms of the technologies that they are using, you've mentioned mobile synergies. That is just one of the aspects. We are seeing more competitive banks are trying to become more competitive by the software and the technologies that they are using and they sort of have to keep some money in the till for that we are seeing the like kcb recently went to the market and announced that it's 
going to retrench some of its staff. Uh, sort of, it's sort of, I, I would say they need the money and they need the money to expand their businesses so that they can be more competitive. So we expect dividend cuts to continue. Uh, but we also, I'd like to mention that we also saw NIC, which invested on the better part of, the, has been investing the last two years. We saw them raise their dividend this year to one shilling from 0 0.25 last year. So it's, it depends. So you're seeing that the investors are sort of paying dividends now, but those who did not invest last year in technologies will be forced to now retain dividends this year. And probably pay them out after they have completed some of their projects. Yes, as you say, and they, NIC grew the earnings by 12%. So uh, walking that balance, uh, the side that uh, the bank that gets, gets that balance right is clearly going to have an edge. But more competition coming in the banking sector. Commercial Bank of India, permission to open a representative office in Nairobi, and wanting a merger with the Kenyan bank. Uh, how is that going to affect the Kenyan market and uh, the investment opportunities? Uh, well, a representative office does not is not a threat as as you might imagine, because they are not allowed to sort of retain deposits or take deposits from customers. What they only allowed is to sort of probe and feel the market, have a feel of the market. We know that HSBC has been here. J.P. Morgan recently announced that they'll also want to set up a representative office. We view it in a sense; it's more of they are trying to capitalize on uh, the oil infrastructure projects and that sort of financing, not necessarily customer or retail banking. Okay, thanks, Anthony. We'll have to stop there. Interesting stuff in the power sector and the banking sector in Kenya.